Hey everyone, welcome you all. In the today's video, I am going to show you how to handle the dynamic table in Selenium. So first of all, let us try to understand what is dynamic table or dynamic web table. So the dynamic table means the rows and columns keeps changing and every time when you load the page, the data is comes from the server. So every time you don't see the same type of data on the table, so dynamically keeps changing. Even the rows and columns, everything keeps changing. So this is called basically dynamic table, right? Let me show you a sample demo table here. So you can just look at here. There are some names, Internet Explorer, Firefox, System and Chrome, and there are CPU percentage, memory, disk and networks so and multiple options are there. And currently if I look at here, the Chrome and the CPU percentage is 6.6%. .6%. Now if I reload the page or refresh the page, it's get changed. Now you can see the Chrome and here the CPU percentage comes to the next column. So previously it was in the second column. Now it is come to the fourth column. Now again, if you refresh the page, now you can see in the Chrome CPU percentage again comes to the second column. Again, if you refresh the page, now you can see Chrome becomes a second row. It is part of the second row now. And the CPU percentage becomes a third, uh, third column, right? So if you look at this, every time when you refresh the page, every time, the name value score keeps changing the rows and even these columns also keeps changing. So currently the disk is a second column. Now when you refresh it, now again it is second, second column. Again if you do multiple refreshes, you can see the second column is network and now disk is becomes a third column. So the rows and columns keeps changing in this table. So this is basically a dynamic web table. So now we need to handle this. So how we can handle the dynamic tables? Most of the times we use customized X paths. So by writing some customized X path, we can handle the dynamic tables. Now let me show you how we can handle this. So my requirement is here. My scenario is for Chrome process, get the value of CPU load. So if you look at the Chrome process, this is my Chrome process. What is the CPU load here is 7%. So to achieve this requirement, we need to first find out where exactly the Chrome is displayed. Because here the name column is a constant and rest of the columns keeps changing. If I look at here, I refresh the page. See the name is still here and memory, CPU, network, disk, these columns are keeps changing. Now again, I'm refreshing one more time. You can see name is a fixed here, rest of the columns are keeps changing. So first of all, we need to find where exactly the Chrome process is present. In the name column itself, in the which row the Chrome option is present that we need to find out first. So once you find out the Chrome, then we need to capture the value of CPU percentage. So sometimes the CPU percentage of the Chrome here uh, displayed in the second column or sometimes it will third column or fourth column or fifth column. We don't know exactly in which column the CPU percentage value will be displayed. And also the value of the CPU percentage keeps changing. This is not the same value every time we will get. So how we can handle this according to the requirement for the Chrome process, first we need to get the value of CPU load. So we need to find where exactly the Chrome is present in which row it is present. Then we need to capture the percentage CPU percentage, whether it can be second column or third, fourth or fifth, which wherever it is, we need to capture this value. Once it is captured, then we need to compare this value with this Chrome CPU percentage, which is displayed in the yellow label. That is our requirement. Now we'll see how we can handle this dynamic table. Let's go to Eclipse. And this is my project, new Maven project, which is already created. Now I'm trying to write a small piece of code to handle dynamic table. I call this a demo three underscore dynamic, dynamic table. Taking main method as a finish. So as a first step, we need to create a web driver instance let me create web driver driver equal to new chrome driver so after that we need to first import this web driver chrome driver then i'm launching the page i can say driver dot get and go to your application copy this url and put here so as soon as i launch my url i'm just trying to maximize the page i say driver dot manage dot window dot maximize so whenever you're trying to work with the dynamic tables, every time the data will be uh, come from the server, every time this data will be refreshed. So you might get some synchronization problems. So better to use a wait statement. So 
I am trying to put an implicit weight here. I can say driver dot manage dot timeouts dot implicitly weight. Then I'll put some duration time seconds, 10 seconds max. Okay. So now I launched my application and then maximize it. So first thing is what as per our requirement, we need to find out where exactly this Chrome option is present, in which row this Chrome option is present. So for that, we what we need to, we need to capture the names from every row for each row and wherever the Chrome is matched, then we have to stop the loop, right? So we need to repeat all the rows, wherever the Chrome is present, there we need to stop searching for the Chrome. So to repeat the rows, we need to find out how many rows are there in this table. That's the first thing we need to find. So for that, I'm writing one X path to capture this particular table. Let's go to selector hub and which is given. So this is my table and table tag is there. So this is the actual table X path, which is given. Now inside the table, there are multiple rows are there, right? So we need to find out a number of rows. So how to find out, I say, we go to in the table, go to T body slash a T body. Inside the T body, we say TR. So this will give you number of rows. So totally four rows are there. So let me capture this X path and which will return all the rows from the table. So I'm writing driver dot find elements by dot X path. And this will return all the rows from the table. I'm storing them in a variable. And this is list of web element. Okay, so because this we find elements which will return multiple web elements, so we need to store them in the list collection. Import this web element. So now we need to find total number of rows. How we can find simply you can say we want to pin them, you can just say number of rows. So you can say number of rows and rows dot size. So this will give you actually number of rows present in a particular table. So this is not our requirement. So what is our requirement is we need to first find out where exactly the Chrome is present. For that, what we need to, we need to repeat each and every row and wherever the Chrome is matched, we need to stop there and we need to capture that element, okay? So I'm writing a loop statement here. I'm writing a normal for loop. I'm starting from one. Let me take a variable called R, row number one. How many times we need to repeat depends upon the number of rows. So we already captured the rows here. We need to just find out number of rows. So R less than or equal to rows dot size and then R plus plus. Okay, now I'm incrementing the looping statement. So in this, what we need to do in every row, we need to capture from every row, which we, what we need to capture here is particular name we need to capture. From every row, we need to capture the name, name web element we need to capture. So how to capture this? We need to properly write a proper X path. Now just observe, I'm writing an X path. So this is the X path of the table. So from this, I want to capture where is exactly the name is present inside the first column. So I'm writing slash T body, T body. Now it is pointing uh, in the table. This is my table. Inside the table, I'm just going to T body slash tr now four rows are pointing i don't need all the columns i need only first column because i want to find out exactly chrome in which row it is so only first column i want to compare with so what i can simply do slash slash td td is representing what table data now we can see 20 elements it is pointing all the tds in the t body but where we need to go here td of one means it is pointing only first column you can see here it is pointing only first column. So if you look at here, first I will go to first row. I'm just going to first row, first column. So Internet Explorer matching. Now I don't change this column number. I will just change only row number. I can say two, Firefox is matching. When I say three, Chrome is matching. When I say four, system is matching. Just by changing this row number, we will able to capture the each and every name present in the every row so i'm just using this x path inside the loop so let me write a statement so driver dot find element by dot x path and here we need to keep this x path and what we need to do we need to pass arguments to this because the column is constant in the first column only we will find all the processes 
and where we need to find first row, second row, third row and fourth. Every time we need to repeat the row number. We need to increment the row number. So instead of hard coding this row number, we'll just pass this R value into this R. So we can just pass R value. This is how we can pass the parameter into the XPath syntax. So this will actually gives you the value which is there in the first row. So these are all values you will get one after another. So I will store them in a variable. So this is basically written what is a web element, right? So I can just say name and this is a web element. This is a web element, right? Now, if you want to print, if you want to see what are the values which is given, this is web element. So simply I just try to capture the text of the web element. I guess the name dot get text. So this will give you text of the web element. Let me execute and see whether it is retaining all the names or not from the table. It is trying to launch my page. Perfect. Now you can see the number of rows are four and all the values were able to capture from the page system, Chrome, Firefox and Internet Explorer. So four exact values were able to capture. So now we need to filter. So our requirement is what we need to first capture the Chrome process and once it is captured, then we will get the value of the CPU load. So how to capture the Chrome process? So we need to put one condition statement. So instead of printing this, what I will do is I will just compare this text. So I say if name dot get text dot equals here if it is a Chrome, right? So then what we should do if it is a Chrome, right? If it is a Chrome, we should get the CPU percentage, CPU load percentage. But if I look at here, currently the CPU percentage is in second column. Now if you reload the page, now you can see Chrome went to the last row and the CPU percentage come to the last column. So this is the dynamic nature. So again, if you refresh the page, now we can see Chrome comes in the second row and the CPU percentage is second column. So if you look at here, the Chrome can be displayed anywhere in the first column itself. The Chrome can be displayed in the first row, second, third or fourth, whichever row it want. It's not a problem with this, but we need to capture the proper CPU load. And where exactly it is displayed, wherever the Chrome is displayed in the same row, from the same row, we need to extract the CPU load. But again, the CPU load can be in the first column or second or third or fourth column, wherever it is. So in this case, we cannot handle this with a normal static XPath. We cannot hard code a row number or a column number like this. Here we have hard coded four and one like this, but we cannot do like that. Because the CPU column is a dynamic. Sometimes it displays in the first column or second, third or fourth column, whichever it is. So we need to capture this properly. So for that, we need to write a dynamic XPath. So let me show you how to write a dynamic XPath. So first we need to write an XPath for the Chrome element. So wherever the Chrome is displayed in this particular rows, we need to first catch that Chrome element, wherever it is displayed. So we need to write a proper dynamic XPath for that. So I'm going to write one dynamic XPath here. Let's inspect this Chrome element for now and which is given this XPath. See TD, normal space, or you can use a text equal to Chrome. So this XPath will match the Chrome wherever the Chrome is dis displayed. Suppose here I'm searching for the element, one element is matching. So after reloading the page, now you can see the Chrome becomes uh, in the third row. It went to third row, but still this XPath will be able to find the Chrome. Again, I'm refreshing the page. Now again, Chrome went to the fourth row, but still this XPath is able to find the Chrome. So this XPath will exactly gives the Chrome, the element, right? So now first we need to capture it. So if the text equal to Chrome, then capture that element. How to capture? I can say driver dot, driver dot, a find element, by dot XPath and specify that XPath. This is XPath of the Chrome element. This is the XPath of the Chrome element. Now, if you look at here, 
here we already capture the chrome element see we find out the multiple web elements it returns multiple uh, names here and chrome is a one of the name among the four right so here we are comparing from the particular element is a name element get text equal to chrome is nothing but what what is this name name is a chrome element only so what we need to do by using this chrome element we need to capture the cpu load cpu load we need to capture so first go to the chrome element wherever it is displayed right so from that we need to capture the cpu load so how we can capture the cpu load if i go back and see the cpu load can be in any column first column second third or fourth column so we need to capture this right so if you look at this uh, suppose here is a chrome so cpu percentage in the second td is there again if you refresh this now chrome is went to second row if i inspect this chrome again if i inspect this chrome once again now this time the cpu percentage is a second column it keeps changing actually so we need to write a proper x path here so how we can write if i look at here these are all if i look at here this is a chrome element so these are all following siblings so the tds are following siblings of the same chrome element now we need to capture these following siblings for that we need to write a proper x path with the x path axis so i'm writing here following sibling when i say following sibling star four elements are matching so what are these four elements for the chrome process these are the four elements are matching cpu network memory and disk suppose if you reload the page now still this x path works yes you can see even the chrome is displayed in the first row these four elements are matching and again if you reload the page now chrome went to the last row but still this x path is matching with all four elements but in these four elements we want to only cpu load not other elements so only this value we need to capture so how we can differentiate this because again cpu load cannot be the third column or fourth column every time it is also keeps changing so now we need to filter this so how to filter this by writing a contains method so i say contains and the text is what percentile so percentile value is a unique across all the values because there are four values percentile is not there for any other text so i'm just filtering the text by using percentile now we can see exact cpu percentage is matching now even if you reload the page i'm reloading the page now you can see chrome comes in the first row cpu percentage in the third column but still this x path works and capture the cpu load so this is how we can simply dynamically write an x path now use this x path here so here i am trying to use it so driver dot find element by dot x path so this x path will capture the cpu load of the element cpu load of the element so i'm just keeping this semicolon so this will return the cpu load of the chrome element and if you directly capture the text value use dot get text get text right so now i'm storing into a string variable string i call it as a cpu load now we need to compare it because as soon as we capture the cpu load and this one we need to compare with this value so we need to extract this value also so this is the x path of the element which is giving but here there is a complete value but we want to verify only this percentage value right capture this and get the text from it driver dot find element by dot x path dot get text right so this will return actual value which is present in the yellow label so i call it as a value and type of this value is what a string so now we need to compare this one and this one both we need to compare in the same if condition so here i'm just comparing this if cp load dot equals the value so then what i can say cpu load i can just print cpu load of the cpu load of chrome process chrome is equal so this is our expectation right so equal else so if it is equal and then what else else we need to just print cpu load of the chrome is not equal in this block we can say so cpu load of the chrome is not equal and after comparison of this 
suppose if it is not matching here, so as soon as I capture the name element, first row, and comparing with the Chrome. If it is a Chrome, then we do all these things. If it is not matching, then we need to go and get another row, right? So after completion of this, we need to break it. Suppose if the condition is true and we verified everything here, then immediately we need to break because we no need to go to the next row if the match is happened. So immediately I say break. So first row it will capture and first name it will capture. If the name value is a Chrome, then capture the CPU load and compare with the value here and break it. If it is not matching with if condition, then this will be ignored and again it capture another row and do the same thing. So this loop will complete till it finds the actual element name, capture the CPU load, compare the value and done. So this is how we can handle the dynamic table. Let me execute and see. So every time whenever I reload the page, so these values are keeps changing. Let me execute. Okay, now it is launched my page. Now go back and see. Perfect. So CPU Chrome node is not equal, it is saying. So why it is not equal? Because here, whenever you are capturing the value, right? We are not exactly capturing the value from this yellow box. We are capturing the whole thing. But actual value is only this one. So we need to use contains method. So whatever value 1% is here, CPU load, that is a part of the entire text. So we need to just instead of using equals, you can say contains or here not CPU load, just value contains a CPU load. So this is how we can do the validation. Value contains a CPU load. Now execute. Okay, now you can just go back and perfect. Now you can see CPU load of Chrome is equal. Even though if you run multiple times, the matches happen because even though the dynamically changes the values, still we are able to capture the right value from the dynamic table wherever it is. So the Chrome can be displayed in whichever row it is and CPU percentage is also keeps changing in the multiple rows and multiple columns. Still we are able to capture the value. So CPU load of the Chrome is exactly equal. So this is how we can simply handle the dynamic table. Means what? The data keeps changing every time whenever the page is reloaded every time this data is coming from the server, right? So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.